Good afternoon everyone, this is Ishani with the IB Professional School and today as a part of our uh, weekly webinars we are going to do a webinar on uh, VLOOKUP so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is like advanced VLOOKUP webinar that we're going to take up and on uh, today what we are going to do, I'm going to start with the little bit basics of VLOOKUP so that anybody who has forgotten about VLOOKUP or does not have a very good background in VLOOKUP can catch up with this uh, webinar. So first of all, what is a VLOOKUP function meant for? VLOOKUP function is used for extraction purpose. I may have a table in the same sheet or a different worksheet or a different workbook. If I intend to extract a part of the data from those particular tables, then it is it should be done by the function of VLOOKUP. What is the full form of VLOOKUP? The full form of VLOOKUP is vertical lookup. So whichever value that you're looking for and based on which you want to extract the value that has to be vertically placed means that it has to be placed in a column. If it's placed in a column, my VLOOKUP function can look for that particular value and once it finds its match, it goes to the other column and extracts the value from it. So that is the basic use of VLOOKUP. But before we get into the uh, advanced VLOOKUP, just to go through the various inputs or the arguments that a VLOOKUP utilizes. So if you look at the syntax, it's VLOOKUP, lookup value, table array, column index number and the range lookup. So first of all, what is lookup value? Lookup value is something that I know that I'm going to search for and against which I'll find a uh, information. For example, in this small example over here, what we have a table, a small table in which we've got given numbers and against each number there is a name. So let's say I'm looking for number 5. So if I'm looking for number 5 and I want to extract the name against it, name 2 should populate in the green box in that is F13. So lookup value would be what? Lookup value is number 5, something that I know of. Now this particular table or we can call it a master database or the master table also has 5 but however in real life your master tables from where you are going to extract would not be such small tables. So when you talk about the lookup value, 
we will never get tempted or we should never get tempted to go and select this number 5 from the main table. The reason is because if I have the main table, if I have 20,000 data or 30,000 database, then I would not be able to find this number 5 in 20,000, 30,000 database. So where would you, would you find a lookup value? Lookup value you will always find right next to where you are trying to extract the value. So this would be my lookup value that is E13. So lookup value you will always try to look for there in the table where you are trying to put the extracted value. Then comes the table array. What do you mean by table array? Table array is the main table from where we will do the extraction of the data. So I am looking for a particular number and from that particular number I am trying to extract a name. So this is my table array. Now when you picking up the table array whether you pick the headers or you don't pick the headers is actually not going to make a lot of difference because it's going to go ahead and look for that particular value, match itself and then go and extract the number. So this becomes my table array. And one thing in table array, in table array, your first column of the table array should consist of the lookup value. You cannot have a table array in which the first column does not consist of the lookup value. The reason is the way we lookups work is that they only go to the first column of the table array and searches for the lookup value. If the lookup value is not there in the first column of the table array, it is not going to go to the other columns and search for it. So it's a mandatory thing for a table array that it should consist of the first column as a lookup value column and it should consist of all the other columns where you are trying to extract. Right? So this becomes my table array. Third thing is the column index number. What is column index number? Column index number is the column number actually the one, two, three. It is the column number of the table array. Okay, from where you are trying to extract a value. So this we have a tiny table array with us in which we have some numbers and we have got some names against those numbers. So we've got two columns. So column number one is the lookup value column in which I'm going to look for the number five, and column two is the name column from where I'm going to try and extract. Hence, my column index number in this situation becomes 2. You have to always remember that it's a number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It cannot be a cell reference. If it's a cell reference, a cell reference should have a number inside it. Or if you are trying to put some functions in there, again the function should return me numbers. At the end of the day, it's a number that a VLOOKUP function is seeking at this particular position. Second thing, when you are finding your lookup, uh, the column index number, you are only going to refer to the table array. If I had one more column in column A, still that would not change the column position of my number. Because I am not going to call, I am not going to count the column number of my entire database. I am only going to count the column number in my table array. Okay. The last thing is a range lookup. Range lookup like you can see it's in square bracket which indicates it's an optional thing. Now range lookup can only have two values, true or false, one or zero. True is for approximate for match and zero or false is for exact match. If I say zero it means I am looking for number five and nothing but number five. So if the table has the value of number 5, only then it will return the value against it. Otherwise, it gives me an error called hash in it, which is not available. It's not exactly an error, but it's error, it's Excel's way of telling that whatever you're looking for is not available in the table. So if we press enter over here, we get name 2 against 5. That's what is there in this particular table. If I type in number 10, then VLOOKUP is going to give me name 3. If I put 20, name 4. If I put a value of 100, it is hash and a because 100 does not exist in this particular table. So that is the role of an exact math. Exactly look for your lookup value in the table array. Go to the column that you indicated in the column index number. Extract the value and return that to you. Okay. Um, now, why when it comes to making your uh, VLOOKUP function 
from exact match to approximate uh, approximate match what do you have to do just remove this zero and put one against it and like we said that the range lookup is an optional value if it's an optional let's say i do not give a value of zero and one then how does my vlookup behave what will it find me will it give me an exact match or will it give me an approximate match approximate match by default we look up if you do not indicate the range lookup it gives you approximate matches so that is what one does now let's see how does a one work first of all one or the approximate match would work in case of number ranges when your lookup value is a number but it when you apply the same algorithm to a text it doesn't really make a lot of sense so if i'm putting 5 it's giving me name 2 uh, if i'm putting 10 it's giving me name 3 if i put 15 which does not exist in my list it is going to give me an answer of name 3 it is not giving me a hash in error which my exact match actually gave so how does the v lookup approximate work in fact if i put 100 i'll get name 4 so how does it really work the way it works is whatever lookup value you are giving it takes that particular value goes to the first column of your table array and starts comparing with the first element so when i gave 15 so 15 is greater than 0 yes it comes down 15 greater than 5 yes comes down 15 greater than 10 yes comes down 15 greater than 20 no since it lies between the range of 10 and 20 it goes back to the lower value that is 10 and gives the value against that So that's why it returns name three. What, What happened? What we give? Nineteen again is going to be name three. Why? Because it still lies between ten to twenty, and the lower is ten, so it would give you name three. But a better approximation to nineteen is three. Yeah, but it does not work based on the nearest. It works on the nearest lowest number, not the nearest highest number. Okay. Now when we give hundred. what happened it is greater than all of them but there is no other value that it can compare it and which is the lowest one the nearest lowest 20 so it gave me name 4 now if what if i give a number of minus 5 then what will happen hash it it will give me hash it why because minus 5 when compared to 0 it's not greater than 0 okay so it does not have a lower or a higher value in front of it so it is not a bit So one thing I don't know how many of you have understood that when you are working with the VLOOKUP approximates, your table array first column has to be in ascending order. In fact, when you guys are typing the formula and when you are deciding between zero and one, and if you look at the approximate match, it says over here along with it that. approximate match the value in the first column of the table array must be sorted in an ascending order it is mandatory for you to do that okay so the utilization of our approximate match is when you are working with numbers and when you are ranges or slabs example would be income tax grades perfect places or when we have based on a salary range you are giving bonuses or salary increments things like that where your ranges of numbers are typically involved in it so this is the basic we look up concept that we have now we look up has two very major limitations what are the two limitations uh suppose you want to find the uh numbers based on the name this yes. Uh huh. Then we can't do it, right? So what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is that if I, my limitation is that if I, that is there. But if I have any column which is on the left hand side of my lookup value column, I am not able to extract it. Simple reason why? Because the table array says it has to start from the column where the lookup value is. If I start from the column where the lookup value is, and the table array does not consist of the column that i need to extract i cannot get out right so it cannot look in the left side second disadvantage is what if i had two of the same numbers 
if two or five, two fives are had in this particular table, then what will we look up to? Will it give you both the answers? The first answer, the last answer. The first available because it goes and searches in a sequential manner. It finds number five. The first instance that is going to five, it will return you that particular name. So the disadvantage is, let's say we are talking about an employee roster. I may have two people of the same name. But my VLOOKUP does not understand that there are two different people and I, if I want to extract something, I would not be able to do so because it works only based on the unique values. So we are going to take up uh, the cases where we are going to do multiple extraction. What do you mean by multiple extraction? For example, if you look at this particular data, I've got some salesperson, the number of customer, the net sales and the profit loss. So obviously, I have salespeople who are going to sell again and again, again and again. Every day they are doing dealing with the customers and they are selling something. So this is their, this is sales one, this would be sales two, this is sales three, and so and so forth. So what I'm looking for is sales in each occurrence. Okay. So I'm not only I not only want for my VLOOKUP function to extract the first sales, which is 1592, but I also want it to extract 1610 and 1624. But my VLOOKUP, would it normally do it? No. It is going to only give me 1592. So how do I do multiple extraction with the VLOOKUP? Understood the question? Okay. So like we discussed, VLOOKUP works how? The VLOOKUP works with unique values. So somehow I have to make these values unique. If I am able to make them unique, I will be able to extract what I need. How can I make it unique? If I, the first occurrence that I have, if I can put Joseph 1 in front of it, then the second occurrence that I have, I think I can put Joseph 2 in front of it, basically name of the salesperson and if I can put the occurrence number over there. And if I concatenate or join them together, I would be able to make it a unique entry. So for finding the occurrence of a particular element in a range, which function is to be used? Countif, right? So let's see how we are going to use a counter function. So if I use a counter function and if I say my range is this entire range, and whom am I looking for? I'm looking for the first person in this range. It will give me the total number of is going to format it back to number. It is going to give me the total occurrence. Total number of times that Joseph appeared in a particular list. But I don't want three, Joseph three, Joseph three, Joseph three. Because again it is not going to make my data unique. What I want is only the occurrence number along with the name. So instead of using counter formula like this, we are going to use it in this fashion in which we are going to let the ranges change increase automatically and what we'll do we're going to fix the top of the range and let the bottom range increase one by one so that the area in which it's trying to find the occurrence is increasing one by one right so if I do something like this I will get one over here and if I copy paste, wherever the first occurrence is, is coming 1, second occurrence is coming 2, third occurrence is coming 3 and 4. All I have to do is concatenate with the salesperson this occurrence number. So I'll do it in this particular cell only. Uh, concatenate is done by ampersand. So with ampersand, we are going to put a hyphen sign and then this is the result we wanted. Right? So now we've got a unique value. Now when you're going to look for, when you're going to extract for these people, nobody is going to put I want Joseph 1, Joseph 2 and Joseph 3 sales. People are going to say I want Joseph sales 1, sales 2, sales 3. Right? So how do we find sales 1, sales 2, sales 3? What we are going to do, so if it is like a continuous range that you are trying to extract, like sales 1, sales 2, 3. So we know it has to be 1, 2, 3 sequence that I need. Then we can use something called columns to increment the number automatically. What does a function columns do? Columns function basically you give an array, you give a range. And what it does, it returns you the number of columns between that range. Okay, for example, if I give this range, how many columns are there? Three columns. So it gives me an answer of three. Now how we are going to utilize it? 
we are going to utilize it to get that occurrence 1 2 3 over here so when i apply a vlookup function it's going to be vlookup lookup value would be joseph why because these names are placed vertically ampersand hyphen ampersand now instead of saying one myself because if i do that then i'll have to type four different formulas so i want one formula over here to get one two three four automatically we put columns and we are going to select any first two columns no, one column and is basically ampersand ampersand what it does it joins the two things together okay so if i did if i do this columns g3 to g3 how many columns are there one so columns returns you a value of one so this whole thing becomes joseph underscore one okay. yeah. uh, not underscore hyphen one right and again just like we didn't count it we are going to fix the first cell we are going to fix this cell and then as it's copy paste it is going to keep on increasing the other extent because i'm copy pasting in a row so my columns have to move right so this will help me to make one two three four once this is done then i have to look for my table array now table array cannot start from salesperson why because i'm not looking for the value of salesperson what i'm looking for is against that unique value unique value is in this particular column so this is what i'm going to select comma what am i looking for column index number would be which column am i trying to extract am i trying to extract the sales column so column number four and zero for exact match before you copy paste make sure you do the right referencing so we'll fix the column in g4 and this we have already fixed we are fixing the table array and once we do that copy and paste so we got our answer now jackie does not exist that's why you got hash na hash na there is no sales for joseph so hash na but other than that we were able to get all the other information for the sales for so this is a multiple extraction which normal vlookup cannot do but by making such modifications to your data you should be able to find the values any questions the columns function why i am using the column function see why i am using it is because <clears throat> if i am going to pick only this function okay what do you think this function is going to return me as an answer number of columns so if i say g3 to g3 how many columns one so this becomes one what is the value in g4 joseph so if you look at this entire thing so what i am saying joseph ampersand is going to join things okay hyphen whatever the value of columns is so if you press f9 to see what the output is output is this one joseph underscore one so the one how are you getting one by the function of columns and why i need it because over here i want joseph one what do i want over here joseph two then joseph three then joseph four so instead of hard coding the formula you will have to write four formulas yourself right instead of that uh, doing that the what we want to do in excel is work with one so if you introduce new functions and you do the right kind of uh, referencing you should be able to work with one formula almost everywhere okay okay very similar to this problem is uh, the problem that we have over here it's called two column lookup or we can say it can be a two column or a three column the fundamental way of doing it would almost remain the same so they are various sales rep from various states and they have ids like we were talking about that in the company i have a employee roster i may have let's say three amit basu but they may not be the reputation data it is unique three amit basu but they may be in different departments one may be in the it department one may be in marketing one may be in hr and if i am trying to extract any information regarding those if i run only based on the names it's again not unique it will not give me the right answers but if i take the information of the names and the department together that will make it a unique person and then i can go ahead and extract it so in that case you are not if i am looking for amit basu in marketing so i am not looking against one value but i am looking against two values over here right same thing is happening in this question so 
they have two joes and they are running in different states right so if i want id of joe in california and if i want the information joe in oregon how do i find it out same thing we'll do these are not unique values these are not unique values in order to make a unique value what should we do we should join them because if i join then if i make joe ca joe or then they are unique in the nature so same thing we'll do we are just going to join them using an ampersand and a hyphen any kind of delimit any kind of symbol you can use to you know join it maybe a hyphen it maybe an underscore anything that you feel comfortable with and we'll join it with a state so once this is done we can copy paste so this value that we are getting is a unique value now let's go to the vlookup function how does a vlookup function work lookup value would be what exactly so when you create a lookup value that will be again created using these two information that is given to you by which you have to go ahead extract so it's going to be a4 double uh, ampersand hyphen ampersand b4 this becomes my lookup value what is my table array from the beginning the unique column that we created what will be my column index number 4 because my id is in the fourth column and 0 because i want a exact match so i get ja568858 let's check right right answer right now same thing if i want to <coughs> copy paste so i need to fix the column i need to fix the column in this and i need to fix my array and i can again copy paste the same formula and i'm getting a different value right so based on uh, two columns we did that there are situations where you require three columns like in marketing if i have two amit basus so again if i join the name with the department i am not going to make a unique value so i might have to join some other thing in order to make it a unique thing so in order to do that we are just going to make a new column and concatenate the values that you know okay any questions no nope. now uh, the last part that we are going to deal with is doing a multiple sheet we look up why we would fall into this uh, place of doing a vertical sheet lookup we all work with the reporting so we make monthly reports let's say i made the 12th month report from january all the way to december at the end of the year there are certain numbers and i need to pick from each and every report and create a yearly report okay now since those numbers are kept in different worksheets i'll have to go and fetch from each and every worksheet and when i am writing a vlookup formula my table array is there from where i have to go to each and every worksheet and find it since the table array location is changing i would not be simply able to copy paste it so if i have 12 months and if i need to fetch the answer for the 12 months how many vlookups do i need 12 so can i reduce my work by not writing 12 but only one formula let's see So what I have given over here, let's say these are three years that I have: 2010, 2011, 2012. Now the beauty about <coughs> making these reports, whichever company you are going to work for, is that the report structure remains the same. Only thing now is going to change is the numbers. So the report structure is going to remain the same, and uh, hopefully the number of records or the number of rows should remain the same. If it's not the same, then you would pick the table array. Length as the maximum, whatever ta table array is the biggest, that's what we're going to pick. So let's say this is the sheet in which I want to populate. I I want to create a sheet in which I get all the values for ten, eleven, and twelve. So if I have to do only for ten, how would I write a VLOOKUP function? VLOOKUP VLOOKUP value would be let's say we are going to go for brand category, comma table array would be where to go to the sheet of two thousand ten. Select this particular column. Then it would be the column index number, which would be three, because I'm trying to find, get the amount and zero for exact. This is the answer that I would get. True. Let me uh, make it a little bigger. Now, if I have to 
go from 2010 to 12, what will you actually change in this formula? From 2010, if I have to write this formula for 11 or 12, the worksheet. So, only thing which we are ideally going to change in this particular question is this 2010 value. This 2010 should become 2011 because I have to refer to the sheet which is 2011 and then 2012 because I want to refer to the sheet 2012. Now, if the name of my worksheets is same as the name of the headers or we can make it the same for the purpose, then I can use the technique that I'm going to show you. So, this part I'm going to remove where the name of the sheet is given and instead of reference of that, I'm going to refer to this particular cell. Okay. So, D4 is 2010 but this is going to be a text and I want to join it with this text. Now this is not a table error anymore because I have the nature of uh, I've done a cell reference and there is a fixed text so it's cell reference in a text so it's going to be a text value that it returns. So over here if you think about it it is written 2010 ampersand exclamation mark D3 to D18 and I like I said this is going to work if the location of the data is the same. Only thing that is changing is the sheet. Right, because then we are saying every time in all the sheets the table error references from the cell B3 to D18. Right now, like I said, whatever operations we have done on it, now we have made it a text instead of a table array. It's not a range that it's picking. So we look up will not work. What I need to do is, is I want to convert this text and let it go and find the referred range or the cell or the table array. And how it is going to be done? Very simple. We are going to introduce a function called indirect. I am sure a lot of you who have worked with multiple level listings in data validation would have heard of this function indirect. So what is the role of indirect function? The role of indirect function is to convert a text and find its reference in Excel. So if this text is given, it will go and find its reference in Excel. So what it does? It goes ahead and finds the 2010 exclamation this thing it looks whether this reference has anything in excel and yes it does so it returns you the range and hence the vlookup starts working properly yeah, again. Press and press see what the output is you can exactly because anytime you are confused it's better to check using your f9 so this is the entire table array that is showing up because that is the reference okay the reference can't say na 2010 b3 d3 it is showing you this is the reference. What is this reference? This is the entire table array of that you are referring to. Okay. Now if I have to, once this is done, all I have to do is referencing again. Okay. So this has to be, uh, this is B5. This is going to be fixed column. D4, fixed row. And oh. Yeah, fixed row and this is a pure text so I don't have to work with it. And so if I copy and paste, done. So one formula to extract from multiple worksheets and multiple records that you're extracting at the same time. So all we have to make sure when we are given such activity is to make sure that the name of the worksheet and the name of the headers are going to match. Sometimes in real life it may not be a possibility. So for that what we can do for the time being of using our formulas we can create a header which matches our sheet names. And once that is done just put the normal report format that a person or your managers want and get to a pay special values, keep the values and remove the headers, the helper headers. Okay and uh, we are using a function called indirect inside this. Only because when we are breaking our table range into a cell reference and a text of the range, it becomes a complete text that is not read as a range or a table array by Vivica. So to convert it back to a range to make sure that Excel understands which range we are talking about, we are using indirect function. Right? Anybody has any questions for today? Because see, if I have a cell reference, okay, if I am going to put a cell reference,
and I have to write uh, consumer activation fee. Would you put a double quotes around consumer acti activation fee? Why? Because it's a text, right? Now something like this. If I put an exclamation mark, B3 is to, let's say, D10. Is this text? Hence, it has to be double quotes. Because if it were, if it was with a sheet name in front of it, it would have been a cell reference. But without a sheet name and just an exclamation mark in front of it, it is not a cell reference anymore. Then what is the use of it? Why is it meaning that text in that format? Because how will you pick a table uh, table array? Table array is a set of cells. Then uh, for each uh, sheet, uh, hmm. the table array should be the same. Right? That is what I said. If it is not the same, then what will you do? Then you have to pick a sheet table or the cell references in which it has the maximum number of records. So, for example, in 2012, certain heads increases, certain brand categories increases. So, instead of this being only this much, it extended. So, yeah. Normally in reports that does not happen. Okay. However, if it does, then you have to make accommodation in the cell reference that you're encountering all the the worst case scenario basically. You have to work with that. Because uh, trust me, I've worked with these companies and for 50, 60 years pattern not changed. Even though it's not very healthy for Excel, working with Excel, but pattern has not changed. So, pretty much report would remain the same. The number of records, depending on which year you are, might keep on changing. Again, if it does change, because I'm, I cannot say 100% it won't change. If it does change, then we have to make provision for the worst. So, pick a table array which encompasses all the other table arrays in different worksheets. Right? Any other questions? Okay, so that's the end of today, today's webinar. The things that we covered today was the basic VLOOKUP and we looked at the limitation of a VLOOKUP. One basic uh, major look at, limitation of VLOOKUP was multiple extraction. If I have one thing that is happening multiple times, how do I work with it? And uh, so we used a two column lookup in which we were using information of two columns and extracting the value. You, we used multiple extractions in which I wanted a value again, multiple occurrences of one particular lookup value. And then we also covered what is called a multiple sheet lookup in which the table array keeps on changing and it's kept in different worksheets. So in, in case you guys have any questions, you can always send us an email at info at ivproschool.com and we will revert back to you. Thank you. And get uploaded. I can be in the sheets also, don't worry. You are in which class? Okay. How come you are over here then? Next class. Please, uh, to be there to access class, we will start. Good to leave. Okay. Oh yeah, because I use that in that class. I don't know which that. But I can't care because you are going to be waiting. We are going to shift our class, so we take a 10 minutes break here. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure which room it is. So I think the people in the front would be able to do. I think we are supposed to swap the classes with Sandeep. <coughs> You guys haven't heard about the indirect function in your extra classes? We have, right? Multiple, uh, the yeah, multiple listing. While converting, like, we have given a cell a name, a cell name a name, then to convert that to. Ah, uh, but that happens in multiple level yeah. listing, right? We are done. Ah, uh, stop recording.